Good morning, everybody, and happy new year. It's the Talking Hats. This is our first show of 2022 here. Um, so, of course, we're going to start off wishing everybody happy new year, happy and prosperous new year. Happy new and, year. Um, you know, uh, Harish, you know, you, happy new year to you um, and the family. And um, I know we, uh, we spoke earlier and you, you wished all of us happy new year. And, um, yeah. you know, we, we're not, we're, we're older now. We're not the party animals we used to be. So we're all, we were all safe last night. No, no, no taking any unnecessary risks or anything. Risk, yeah. <laughs> not drinking till like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, no way. Uh, I, I mean, was up until like two or something because we, we wanted to do a little toast for the Colorado New Year too. Cause you know. Oh, right. Yeah. Cause you guys have New Year's, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, get, went ahead and gave her family a call and, um, Indonesia for her brother was like yesterday. I mean, happy new year's for her brother in Indonesia was like, uh, like the middle of the day yesterday or something like that. So we gave him a call to him, wished him a happy new year, but yeah, all that, all that stuff aside, um, you know, uh, remember last, uh, last weekend when we went out to, um, when we went downtown, <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> when we were driving downtown, right. I wanted to go ahead and tell this story. Um, so I had just gotten on the Dulles toll road, um, and we were, we were heading downtown and I was, man, I, I didn't, we were talking back and forth and I was flying. I didn't even realize it. I was going close to 80. And um, so I see this, uh, this cop car creeping up behind me. I'm like, oh shoot, I'm getting pulled over. And um, I look at Harish, I'm like, man, I, I didn't even, I didn't even realize I was speeding. I was, I tried to hit the cruise control to slow down, but it was too late. Um, and he was like, he was on, I, he was so on my tail. All I, all I could see was the, top, the lights on the top of the car. I couldn't even mm -hmm. see. The police car, I saw, I saw the lights, he was on me. So I was like, man, I'm gonna just go ahead and, and pull over. I put on my hazards, pulled off to the side of the road. Uh, Harish was looking at me, I, everybody was like, what did you do? I was, I was like, I didn't even know we were talking, y'all, I didn't, you know. And so, um, <coughs> so he pulls up behind me, puts on his lights. He hadn't put on his lights yet. Um, I, I just, you know, I knew it was over. So I just went in and pulled over. Um, so he gets out, comes up to the car. He was like, you okay, man? I was like, uh, yeah you know and I was, I'm pulling out my license I was like yeah I'm good you know I, I, you got me I was like he was like I wasn't gonna pull you over man I just I just got up behind you I just wanted you to slow down a little bit he's like I wasn't even gonna pull you over he was and then, and then everybody everybody in the car starts busting out laughing at me I'm burying my face in my hands it's like you know I'm like in full shame mode he, he's razzing me he's like these guys are gonna give it to you now huh I was like yep they already are <laughs> he, he was the coolest cop ever like he he totally could have got me um i'm not i'm not gonna put his name out there because you know he might get in trouble for not giving me a speeding ticket but just the nicest guy in the world and uh shout out to all the fairfax county police department um true professionals around here um never really had any issues with them um the Loudoun county sheriff that's a different story but uh, Fairfax County Police have always been cool, and um, so shout out to all of them. And this particular officer, uh, we spoke about it. I sent his uh, commander, a, a, you know, a, a letter of commendation just uh, on his professionalism and uh, just he's a cool guy. So that was a pretty neat experience. And then we we get downtown, and uh, that was we had some fun with that too. If you want to talk about that a little bit, what we did when we went around, just some oh, general. Man. I mean, that's it because I've never been to city center and I mm. didn't even, I didn't even, I, I didn't even know that place existed because we don't, we haven't, we don't go to DC as much as we used to, but wow, they redone that place to almost like an upscale, like downtown New York kind of vibe. And they have some stores that you, I mean, if you love shopping, that's, the, <laughs> that's the place to be. Well, <laughs> You better love shopping and you better be doing well in life because those it's the high end, it's definitely the high end district. You got yeah, you know, oh, very Hermes, high end district. Um, Louis, all those type of stores down there. So uh it's 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 real the area is real nice. They have a if you haven't been down there, they have like um uh displays that they put up every season. They change um uh like there's they have a hanging display that they change every season people go down there and take selfies and all that stuff mm -hmm. um, so if you like that kind of stuff it's nice coffee shops and different restaurants down there mm -hmm. definitely a cool vibe down there like yeah nice very nice spot. i mean you know yeah. good stuff but th that's not the, even the craziest thing that happened that that when we got pulled over is 
when we were seeing the national Christmas tree as we were going and checking out and taking pictures, yeah. all of a sudden you had Secret Service police say, you have to clear out of here right now. Yeah. This uh, thing is closed. We're like, what just happened? We're in the middle of our pictures. They're like, get out. Right. Yeah. We're like, wait, what? <laughs> but, you know, they had a job to do. And, and we all, and, and I believe they had some, some, I think it was some sort of military appreciation that week for Christmas. They had all the bands, they had certain military personnel, and they probably wanted to come see the tree. I th yeah, I think they were probably clearing us out. I think, I think, well, the president was there. And with that whole thing going on, mm -hmm. um, they were probably about to come over with the military people to see the tree. I'm right. speculating, but, um, I heard uh, somebody talking. I, I may one of the officers. I think I heard talking, saying something like, "The president's about to come out," or mm -hmm. um, so something like something like that was going on. We got we got ushered out of there pretty quickly. Yeah, and I had to take a two mile walk back to the car. <laughs> yeah, because we could have uh, we could have cut across everything, but unfortunately, they they, they literally sealed off all. Yeah, we had, access. They, had to, they made us go the opposite way from where we came, and yeah. that ended up being a, a nice yeah, little workout. Good. But overall, yeah. it was a good night. We had we had fun downtown. Yeah, it was really nice. And then, you know, we came back home and just relaxed. And, they, yep. you know, that was Christmas and then good times. celebrated good times. And uh, and then now the new year started, you know, hopefully 2022, we, as we said, we wish everybody a prosperous new year and, you know, we get on and everybody can, um, you know, gather their things and look forward to the new year. And please follow and like our show. We, got, we have new things coming. Subscribe and like. Um, do you want to get started on the games yesterday? Yeah, that's cool. And and and, and to, to lastly, touch on what you were talking about. You know, subscribing and, and giving us some love here. You know, if we get enough uh, love going. We can so again, some of these hats made and sent out to our, our loyal listeners. If we get if we can get enough of a base going here, so you know, y'all interact with us. Um, I sent one to you know last uh, in studio show. We told Chris we were going to send him one. We got one out to him. He he got that uh, two days ago. Thanked us for oh, it. Nice. Uh, wish us a happy new year and all that stuff so yeah that was cool uh thank y'all for bearing with us on our last show at hooters that the audio there was a little rough next time we do one of those we'll we'll have the logistics worked out better so it looks and sounds better um but yeah you know it was a fun time and you know if y'all did listen to that to that thank you i know it was rough but thank you but i'll kick it over to you to go ahead and uh, get going on yesterday's action um I know where we are as far as the, the the matchup goes for the national championship, but I honestly didn't see too much of the games. Um, I know uh, the first one had a little more action than the second one, but the more you were more interested in, but yeah, you can go ahead and kick off, kick off. With yeah. That. Cincinnati and Bama. I mean, they were, they were close. I mean, the score predicted, you know, it's going to be a close game, but <clears throat> Cincinnati did have their opportunities. I mean, they both team went back and forth, but at the end of the day, Alabama's talent just trumped him. I mean, it, 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 I mean, you get, you have to, you have to give credit to the players. You have to give credit to the actually the entire coaching staff that kind of put together the game plan. They knew what they were doing. Um, Cincinnati hung in there as much as they could. I mean, they, they tried and they, they could have easily taken the lead on some of it, but just Alabama's sheer will to win and their sheer just, just talent, man. I mean, talent just, you can just see the difference where <laughs> certain players are just made differently they're just made differently and that yeah. game i mean i i expected i expected a more of a blowout in the first game than the second game i thought i thought yeah, same like here. Alabama, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but then i mean and then when i saw the michigan game i mean i wasn't i mean i was upset but i wasn't angry because i knew georgia is going to come out playing like i mean i didn't see that coming man i thought i really thought that would be a good game i thought michigan would try to employ some mm -hmm. of the the tactics that they used to um to win their their last game mm -hmm. they they had a tough game um in the championship game and they they slowed it down against Ohio State and just grinded it out and um took charge with that running game in the beginning and they they were able to ride that to the end i thought they had employed the same tactics but georgia jumped on them early and it was i mean it was over yeah so yeah. they never really got a chance to do that um I mean, if you look, it was just sheer speed. I mean, their defense is just, uh, they've never faced an, a defensive line or the line. I mean, yeah. Georgia has one of the best linebackers in the game. Yeah. I mean, number 11, I forgot what his name is, but I mean, he was all over the place. I was 15. I, I forgot. Like, I, I think it's their, I think it's their middle linebacker. Or I think it's a middle or outside linebacker, but he's, I think he won one of the best linebackers in the nation. So, mm -hmm. I mean, even if you tried, I mean, and yes, I think some of the play calling, but I think also they played in Florida. 
So that heat probably did play a huge factor in the game. Um, Cause if you're not used to playing in that kind of weather and besides coming from a cold weather stadium to a very hot weather neutral stadium, I think that kind of played a factor into um, their, 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 their ability, their endurance, because Georgia, I mean, it's hot all year round. So, <laughs> so they're, they're, they're used to that weather. I mean, no yeah. excuse, I mean, no excuse, but, but at the end of the day, Georgia's D, I mean, they just, I mean, they, t- they, they just took that game over and um, that, but I'll tell you this though, this is going to be the, a very good rematch against Alabama and Georgia. If Georgia plays like they did against um, Michigan. They won the national championship. No hands down, hands down. And they want to redeem themselves from that dirty loss. <laughs> yeah. I, on to the national championship. I think, um, I think it'll be, I can't see that being a high scoring game. Um, mm. Two teams that know each other so well. Um, I think they'll come out there. I think some nerves will be in play early. I think it'll be a close game, um, probably come down to the last possession. Mm-hmm. Um, and in scenarios like that, uh, I'm definitely not an Alabama guy by any means. I hate to pick them, but I, I'm going to. That's my pick for, um, for the national championship. Um, mm-hmm. not, like I said, not, not rooting for them or anything. I just I think that's how it's going to play out. Though. So – they made a very interesting tidbit um, when they um, um, with Georgia playing against the Michigan. They they employed their three tight end set, which they didn't do against Alabama. Yeah. And their tight ends are like like freaking superhuman monsters. They're like yeah. six eight, six seven, six five, six nine. I mean, those are, those are some big boys, and yeah. and they can run like wide receivers. So yeah. I think their game plan if when they go against Alabama is to change not to do what they did the first time around, employ that three tight end set, employ more of their run i didn't know delvin cook's brother played for georgia i didn't know that either until just now yeah Yeah, his younger brother plays and he's i think he's better than delvin cook i think he'll be better i think uh, mark my word when he gets drafted in the nfl i don't know if it'll be next year or the year after Mm -hmm. he'll be better than his brother because i see a little bit more of like a twitch action he can catch the ball out of the backfield and even i think he's a little bit faster i think he's a little bit faster than delvin cook just a tad bit. Just a tad I have bit. to look into this dude. Some I, I didn't. I had no idea he existed. So me neither until yesterday. A <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but 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 if you look at it, because Delvin Cook played for Florida State, so they were saying that like when Michigan played Florida State, that he did that. But I'm surprised Florida let that talent out of their state. I'm just surprised about that because usually they're really good about keeping um in house talent. But you know, yeah, and Florida State's not the program it used to be by any means. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Maybe at some point Dion can get back in there and revitalize the program. They had their chance to hire him and blew that, but they will have another chance at some point down the road. So we'll see Mm -hmm. how that goes. Um, But I'll tell you this, though, that defensive line, I mean, I was shocked that they lost to Alabama the way they lost to Alabama the last time the SEC championship game. But they're firing on all cylinders. And I also believe I think the stage is a little bit too big for Michigan. The reason why I'm saying that is – I agree. Yeah, I mean – Playing against Ohio State is one thing, but playing in a in a in a team that's no, I don't think they were positioned to win that game because they were making a lot of mistakes that they never made before. The offensive line were having false start calls, they're having a little bit of certain certain penalties that you don't see them doing. People mm-hmm. dropping balls, so I just felt that the game for them, even though it won't be their last, I think they were they weren't prepared enough because when you're down by that much, you want to do more, and unfortunately, like you can't like, and, and they're still kids. I mean, I mean, yes, they're young men, but mentally when you are, when you've never come back from a three score deficit or even a two score deficit, mm-hmm. it's difficult. And you can say all you want at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's a mental thing. And I will say this, even though I poo pooed McCaffrey a couple of times, he is the future of Michigan quarterbacks. Like he, he can throw the ball and run the ball when he needs to, but if he can throw, if he can hone in on his skills next year, because McNamara is not going to be there, I don't think so. But if he, if he can hone in on his skill, he's going to be a Michigan's going to be a tough offensive team next year. I mean, yeah, he has put in you, you said the, the the stage was too big for him, and I, I think that too. I was when I, you know, with the final result, I was thinking, you know, they must have just got caught up in the moment too much. It was just just mm-hmm. the bright lights were too much for him. Um, that's the only way being a team as good as they are. That's the only way you lose a game that badly. Um, that that game definitely should have been more competitive. They just um, got the first game. Up. Yeah, the first game, despite the score, uh, Georgia and Cincinnati, despite the, the final score, mm-hmm. was more competitive uh, yep. a match than than the second one. Ended I up. mean, but in all honesty, I don't think neither quarterback is that good. I really don't think they're that good. I think. 
the, the, the positions that their coaching staff put them in, they made them succeed. And I guarantee you this game, this national championship game, Georgia's not going to make the same, same mistakes that they did the first time. Mm. Because, I mean, the thing is, their defensive coordinator is now the head coach of Oregon. So um, he wants to play this out, and he wants to go, go out with a bang. So I, 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 I see them blitzing more against um, uh, the, the Alabama quarterback. I forgot his name. Uh, what was it? Uh, Bryce. Name? Bryce Young. Bryce, Bryce Young, yeah. I see them, I think I see them going to be blitzing more because when they blitz Michigan, boy, I tell you, <laughs> Mac, Kate McNamara couldn't do anything. Yeah, he's one of those QBs, though, that I'm not sure you want to blitz so much because um, – if you give if you blitz, you give him a lane to take off. Mm-hmm. What they'll probably do is play pocket contain on him. They, with a quarterback like that, um, I'm not saying he can't beat you from the pocket. I'm sure he can, but mm-hmm. he's definitely stronger once he gets outside of it. So I think they'll probably keep him in there and then play a spy in the middle to keep him from taking off. Oh yeah, I, then, I think they, 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 I, I think that they just want to put so much pressure on him, not like just stay back and let him pick him apart because. At the end of the day, I mean, I think, and, and the good thing is when the, the, one of their players, Georgia players, got thrown out for targeting. Oh. If he got thrown out the second game, or the second half, he would have been out. So that was a huge because he's a corner. So they need all the corner help they can get, and they're healthy now. So hopefully, you know, it'd be a great game as you yeah. said. I'm, I'm picking Georgia. I hope Georgia wins because I don't want Al. I, 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 I'm tired of Alabama winning all these championships. Yeah, it'd be nice to have <laughs> some new blood. Uh, yeah, and Georgia shot deserves it. it. Yeah. So we'll Pretty see how that good. goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick shout out to LeBron who had 43 last night at 37 yeah. years old. Uh, just switching gears just a little bit there. I just want to shout him out real quick. We're not going to get into Lakers. I don't care about them at all. So I just wanted to. Shout nah. him out. Well, Kobe's still the greatest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's got the slot over LeBron to me. I mean. LeBron's got four. Kobe's got five. So maybe when LeBron gets five. Uh, oh, Kobe if, has five, right? Yeah, if, yeah. If he does, if LeBron gets to five, we can have that discussion. But mm-hmm. not until then. And it's not only about championships by any mm-hmm. means. But, um, you know, Kobe's career is, is finished. And he, he made his mark. And to me, his mark, you know, the, the, what he left, the legacy left on the game at this point is still uh, higher to me than LeBron. LeBron's mm-hmm. career is still going. We'll see where he ends up at the end. It's mm-hmm. not fair to say, oh, he, he's – not he's not Jordan yet. His career is still going. We'll right. see where he ends up. But for 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 me, for now, it's mm-hmm. still you know Kobe's in my opinion still over him. So. Gotcha. Just before you switch before you switch gears back into the thing, let's say if LeBron ended his career today, like let's say he ended it to today mm-hmm. or even let's say next year from now. Yeah. Do you feel that? Because in my I know my opinion. I I, I want to hear yours in the sense that. Mm-hmm. Um, do, would you would people put him over Kobe because if he does if you if he doesn't win another championship and he doesn't perform well let's say because as as age progresses I mean people do lose their um kind of their jump and the kind of the little bit of their skill do you feel that he'll be still be named as one of the greatest to ever play in the top at least top five if his career ended right now um mm-hmm. For some people, he's already the greatest. Uh, and I mm-hmm. think that's probably, you know, with, with the older fans um, aging out, um, the majority of fans are probably within the generation of, you know, from when LeBron started playing and people who never saw Jordan play. Mm-hmm. You know, Jordan, um, for, for this generation of fans, is like maybe Dr. J was to me. Um, I probably right. saw the tail end of Dr. J's career, but I never saw Dr. J, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I never saw the real Dr. J play. So if you tell people who were talking to me about Dr. J back then, I'm like, I don't know who this ghost is. I, you know, Jordan is the best to me. I, so, you know, it's, it's all about the age of the fans. Mm-hmm. And that's why most people, the majority of NBA fans at this point, probably have LeBron as the best player ever, despite the fact that his career is still going. Um, mm-hmm. To me, um, having seen all of Jordan's career, pretty much, having seen um, all of LeBron's career from, I mean, from high school, like I said, on a previous show, I was recording LeBron's games when he was in high school on a VHS tape uh, Mm -hmm. when they played on ESPN. I was a huge LeBron fan from the start. Um, And so I've seen all of it. To me, the best I've ever seen do it is Jordan. To me, the second best I've ever seen do it is Steph. So, and I I said that on a previous show. To me, the third best um, is Kobe. And, and and then you've got LeBron in there. But like I said, LeBron's career, those Steph is still going, 
Um, he can pro- he'll probably add a ring this year and match LeBron at four. And so he's mm. going to hold on to his spot at, at number two. Um, but the fact that LeBron, I mean, longevity plays into it when it comes down to, to greatness. And um, the fact that he's still, I mean, he's still a top five player in the game at 37 years old. You yeah. couldn't say that uh, Jordan at 37, he was still, I think that was his last year when they beat Utah. Was he 37? Mm-hmm. I, 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 mean, I might be completely making that up. Um, I know at 38, he was retired. He didn't come back until um, 39 and 40 with the Wizards. Um, mm-hmm. So um, the fact that he's still playing at such a high level at, the, at, this, at, at this age, um, right now he's not there. But at the end of his career, he very well could be. Um, so, and he's, he's going to end up as the all-time leading scorer, too. So yeah. he, he's, um, I think he's in, he's right behind Carl Malone. As a matter of fact, he should pass him this season and take over the number two spot. Oh, so, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So, I mean, the discussion is still ongoing. It's people who don't think he's the greatest ever, it's unfair to think that he could never get there. His career, his career is still going on. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I have That's an open true. mind to it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not a hater. I've, I've put that out there before. I'm not a LeBron hater. I, res- get, I respect his game. Hundred percent, but he's not the greatest to me yet. Yet, right. no, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Now, now to um, um do you want to you want to want to talk about the Wizards slide or you want to you you, you want to backtrack and go back? Since to, we're uh, talking basketball, we can go ahead and get into that. Um, right. And it's not even necessarily a slide. They're just with the roster being so inconsistent here lately. Their their play has been fairly inconsistent. Um, we were watching uh, bits and pieces of the game last night or the other night. When we were um, having some Mexican food, we had some. If y'all ever in, in the Northern Virginia area, you got to check out El Fresco. That place is, to me, it's a hidden gem. Um, to me, it's the best Mexican food in the Northern Virginia area. Um, I've had better down in like Richmond and stuff, but it's it's the best up here. It's it's money. So check it out. We were watching a Wizards game when we were there the other night, and um, Bill uh, Dinwiddie was out uh, in COVID protocols, and Bill, you know, he was putting on a show, um, and they they took it to the Cavs which the Cavs are a good team. They're the fourth seed in the East, and the Wizards are currently eighth. But the Wizards took it to them, like throw down, knock down, drag out, like mm-hmm. pummel them. Um, but then, you know, uh, Bill was out the previous game. But in the previous game, they uh, they lost to uh, the freaking Heat. They, they, but that's the game they were in. But when it came, you know, at the end, they, they uh, I think they were, they were losing by a lot, and they came back in that one, right? <laughs> I think it was like 20 points. I yeah, they were losing by like 20. And yeah. then they came back and it was a close game. But um, they got to get games like that if they hope to be a playoff team. The Heat, they're, they're fine. I'm not impressed by their roster. I think the Wizards have a better roster. Um, but like I said, Bill was out. So I'll, I'll give them that. Um, and then they, they uh, previous to that, they lost to the Sixers, which you expect. Um, mm-hmm. But then they, they destroyed the Heat in the game. I mean, the, the Knicks in the game before that. So they've just been inconsistent. I think that's just due to the fact that the roster has been mm-hmm. somewhere in flux with the COVID. Season. I just feel that when we tweeted out about Kyle Kuzma, I, I started thinking, I was like, maybe he needs to take over games. Like, he maybe does. He, just, yeah. Because like, I, I think like he can, because like, <clears throat> I think if, if everybody else is struggling, he has the talent to go inside or outside. And he's unguardable. When he's on fire, I think he's one of the most unguardable players in the league. Um, Man, he, let me tell you, <laughs> when he was with the Lakers, um, I love this dude. His rookie season, I loved him. Like, I thought anybody on the, that roster was tradable besides him. And they thought the same thing because they got rid of uh, Ingram and uh, and uh, somebody, somebody else they traded to uh, New Orleans to get Anthony Davis. But um, they, they uh, got rid of everybody but him because they believed in him too. And then he fell into a slump, and they, they got rid of him. But I think that kind of player, the, the player that I thought he was, is still in there because he shows flashes here and there. And And like we said, like we said in the tweet, he can be the face of this team. He has mm-hmm. that kind of talent. He just has to get it. He has to understand how good he is. Mm-hmm. Like I said, like we said, once that once that uh, switch flips, like it's over. <laughs> oh, I, and I think it's going to happen sooner than later because right now, <clears throat> I, I think I, I think I'm going to backtrack on one of the things I've said is like, oh, we have to look at West Lunsell or we have to look at the players. It's going to take time for all these guys to kind of gel and it's going yeah. to take time longer. And I think we were, maybe I'm just speaking for us or me that you can jump in. I think we were, we might have been too critical on the team a little yeah. bit. And I said that too. I said, 
I, I said it's early. I know we're jumping the gun a little bit, but I was ready to blow it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I admit that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's, and I think with time, I mean, cause if you look at it, they're finally finding what works. Cause it's almost like they have to figure out what lineup, which, which team like, or which, which rotation I should say works well for them in certain situations. And, and it's going to, and, and we're going to have games like they'll lose by, tw- they'll be up by 20, lose by 10. They'll be, they'll be down by 20, win by five. You know, it's going to be like that for a while until they kind of figure things out. And, and even, I think we were critical on Bill. I was like, we should trade Bill. He's not, you know, but it, it that's the frustration as fans like we're like man like what was this something because we we earned for like a basketball championship here in dc we earn and because it's and in dc is a i mean this dmv area is a great basketball town a lot of people don't know that but it is it has produced a lot of great players it's just that they don't want to come here and play <laughs> which which is which can go a lot of ways but you know I, I think, but before the season's over, they'll be they'll be back at least top seven, at least top seven. Uh, the hope is once they get their their whole roster back, and and Rui is is back. Um, he just went into the COVID protocol, so he can mm-hmm. play. Once that stuff clears and he gets back in the lineup, once Thomas Bryant finally gets back out on the court, once they have got their full roster, I fully expect this team to be top five um, in mm-hmm. the East. Um, and really. On paper, they've got top three talent, uh, in my mm-hmm. opinion. It's just, um, do they have the time left in the season to get everybody gelling, um, get the coach and his scheme on the same page with the players? You know, these are things you work on in training camp, and they didn't have that opportunity due to the injuries. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully, with everybody getting healthy here, um, they can turn the corner um, and, and, you know, uh, go into the second half of the season strong um, with the full, complete roster and then no catastrophic injuries down the stretch. Um, I still think uh, moving Bertans is a move they should look into. Um, I'm sure there's a contender out there that needs a shooter. So mm-hmm. maybe they can look into that too, moving him and um, clearing out some of that, that uh, the glut of talent they have there at that position. And so Kispert can get some more time on the floor too. He's still playing very well. Um, I hope they can continue to give him minutes if people come back. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, I think Bertans is the chip to move because we were talking about other players. I think if we move Bertans, we can probably even get like a trade, like with a draft pick or even some cash back for him. Yeah, I'm not even as interested in getting a player in return as as I am just um, clearing some space for Kispert to get more minutes, mm-hmm. um, for Kuzma to get more minutes. I know he's a, a starter now, but you know, once people get healthy, that might eat into his time, and I don't mm-hmm. want that at all. That's that's not good for the team or good for his. Um, continuing development yep. because he's going to CJ McCollum was just a, I, I, we brought him up in the tweet. Um, he was just a, a middling player. And then all of a sudden, like he just, he got it. He understood how good he was and he just started balling. Like it was over from that point. And that's, I, I think I, I like it's, it's later. Kuz, Kuzma is later at this point in, in his career than it happened for McCollum. But I still think, and I, I hope he saw the tweet because I don't think he gets it. I don't think he understands how good he is. I think he knows, you know, I'm an NBA baller and, you know, I'm hearing all this mm-hmm. stuff. But I don't think he understands the kind of talent he has. And I think if he reads enough stuff like that, you know, maybe maybe people are right. Maybe I am like, maybe I should take an extra shot or two here and there. And, you know, maybe it'll mm-hmm. click. Because he, he, I'm telling you, he has that talent. He, mm-hmm. He's that good, man. He's, he, he's not Durant, but he's like Durant light as far as his talent goes. So I just, he needs to get it. And once he does, he, he'll, this will be his team. This will be his city. What's oh yeah, hundred percent. And he's still young. He's like what, 25? 25, uh, he's, 25? I believe he's younger than that. Let me check real quick. Oh yeah, because he came into the league when he was 18, 19, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, he's older. He's twenty six. <laughs> Thanks. So I was six. I was oh, okay. off, but I mean, that's still that's still like young. I mean, people people don't hit their prime until their mid twenties, depending on when they come into the league. Well, so. twenty seven is the year that um, players usually like hit that that, that like that moment where it's like. They're either going to become like Giannis, where Giannis was 27 when when he he was always great, but when it was just all right, I'm elite. Like that 27 is that year when you hit that elite status. I think same happened for Jordan and LeBron when they hit 27, like went from great to elite. So he still has a year. I think you know as he still continues to build on this year, when he gets 27, he'll be 27 in July. So really, you know, his 27 year will be next season. So maybe at that point is the point where he can be that 25 and, and 10 
you know, and maybe 25, 10 and five type player and mm -hmm. take over this team and take over this city. Yeah. I, I believe awesome. in them. Who is uh, I believe I, in you? I, 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 <laughs> if you want to come on the show, please do. <laughs> well, we'll, we're, we can be your biggest cheerleaders. <laughs> yep. No doubt. I would say this, like when you're, when we were talking about um, Steph Curry and I saw one of the Golden State Warriors when they, when they finally played it here at, at a reasonable time. Um, <laughs> I, I have to agree. He he does have handles. He does have some really good handles. He does have, and I can I, I can I can say he he can probably be a really good point guard. I think I I, I, th I think you're right with the point guard shooting and everything. When I was used to poop pros, I don't think he's a point guard, but yeah, he he. I have to retract my statement. He's good. He's good. <laughs> There's nobody. He, he's he's he, he's unguardable. <laughs> some people, <laughs> when it comes to ball handling, some people will say Kyrie. Some people will say uh, Chris Paul. Um, right. Kyrie is no doubt the second best ball handler in the league, but I think Steph is the best ball handler in the league. I think he's up there as far as about better passers mm -hmm. in the league. Um, and he, uh, for his, despite his lack of size, he holds his own, his own on the defensive end. He's not out there getting like, you know, bully like Isaiah Thomas does or anything like that, right. who, who recently signed with the Dallas Mavericks. Um, mm -hmm. His 10 day contract with the Lakers expired and they let him go. So he went to Dallas um, they're probably – I could see them hanging on to him for the rest of the season because they actually need him. The Lakers didn't really. Um, but, uh, you know, talking about better passers in the game, you got Nikola Jokic at center out there dropping dimes left and right. Um, the Nuggets are actually playing pretty well. They were uh, – they played the Nuggets – I mean, they played the Warriors on Tuesday night. They were supposed to play them on Thursday, but that game got postponed due to COVID. Um, mm -hmm. but, then, but then that game against the Warriors, they were blowing them out all game. They were up like, by, like, more than 20 – at one point, and then the Warriors came back and made it a game, but they ended up closing it out in the end. Jokic is just, he's too much. Um, and their their yeah. roster, they're struggling, but um, Jokic is still playing at better than an MVP type level. His numbers are, are way better than they were when he won the MVP last year. So we'll see if they can make the playoffs and he can maybe win it again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, think, I, think the only, I think one of the teams that can challenge Golden State is Denver. If they can... Healthy. If they, can, if they, can, if they get healthy, yeah, yeah they can with, with Murray. And, that would be a great series to watch, yeah. though, too. It will be a good, like, defensive uh, back and forth. Like, it will be pretty much who can stop the scoring. That's it. At the end of the day, because yeah. both teams can score. It's like who can stop the other team from scoring. And that will be a great game. That will be a great series to watch if that comes down to it. If, if, if Murray comes back, there wouldn't be a better matchup in the West. Um, and I don't think anybody else in the West can challenge um, Golden State. Yeah. I think if, if Denver doesn't get healthy and they don't um, make a run and get a finish with a better um, seed, then Golden State is going to run like a hot knife through butter through the West, and then they'll end up matching up with, you know, mm. probably the Nets or, or um, Milwaukee. It'll probably be the Nets because Kyrie's coming back, and then they'll just, at that point, they're going to run away with it. But, um, yeah, I don't, you know, who knows what's going to happen in, in the East. I mean, it should be Brooklyn, and, but in the West, it's I stick sticking with my pick from from day one, Golden State yeah. all the way. It's funny you say that, like like with the East, because I I think the East, like you can see a drastic difference in play when you compare the Western Conference to the Eastern Conference, and and I don't think I I really don't think like Brooklyn has what they need to win a championship for some reason. To win, no, to win all of it, no. To win the East, sure. Yeah. To win the championship, no. They do not. They're not deep enough. Yeah, and, and and I think Milwaukee may win it again if 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 they can start things. I mean, they're they're one of those teams that like you know they start off very slow. They kind of, they're probably still having a hangover from last year. Let's be real. But at the end of the day, I mean, if they can click on all centers, why can't they um, compete again? So the current one seed in the East is a team that nobody's talking about. Um, they're flying under the radar, and I'm sure they prefer it that way. And that's the Chicago Bulls. Um, mm. They've got a very talented roster. And like I said, they're just – they're not a team of superstars. They've got talent. They've got good coaching. And they're a team that can be right there in the end, too, um, just due to the fact that, you know, they, they probably feel like they're being disrespected. Um, they've got uh, a guy who can have the ball there at the end in DeRozan. But then just the overall strength of their roster is a team they're, – they're a team that can, that can stay in it with anybody. Um, and the Wizards actually have them tonight. So um, we'll see oh, how yeah. that goes. Um, but you but want to see it somewhere, or are you <laughs> let's see where is the game? I think it's uh, I think it's here, is it? I think so. Just a sec, guys, bear with us. 
Yeah, New Year's Day. No more uh, hangover food. <laughs> um, yep, that's here. Um, I will let you know. I'll let, I'll even look at tickets. Um, I'll let you know because my sister's last night in town is tonight. Okay. And I don't know if she wants to hang out. Um, let me check on that after the show. If she if she has plans, um, then I'll look at tickets. Maybe we can go. Yeah. That'd, that'd be, be cool. Really, that'd be um, pretty cool, yeah. So let me check on that. And I'll, I'll, yeah, do uh, your thing. get yeah, back out that, with you on that one. Yeah, I was, I was thinking we just go to a bar. Maybe she would want to go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'll see. I'll, I'll look into it. Um, I mean, me, I'm, I'll more check than, like, I'm more than just happy just to go see it at a bar. Just go to the bar, go to a bar, just go see the game, and then, you know. And you wouldn't want to go to a game. The problem is you have to show your vaccination status, and I don't know what, what really, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Now D- DC's changed their thing that you have to show proof of vaccination. Oh. So I don't since I don't, um, I haven't gotten my booster yet. I don't know if that's no, free. it's not. That's not. That's not considered. Oh it's, really? It's just the two. Yeah. Oh, okay, because because yeah. because some states are now saying you have to show proof with booster and all this. No, I, I, that's that's not it in DC. Okay. It's it's just the vaccine, the first two. The, the, you know. Okay, so if, that's I mean, that's still as of now still considered completely back. So yeah, because I'm booster kind of afraid that yeah. if we buy tickets and go, and they're saying, "Oh, I'm sorry, you can't go in." No, I, I know, I know that's not it yet. Okay, yet. that's not yeah. it yet. Yeah. as of today, that's not it. <laughs> we'll see. Um, if you, I mean, if we want, I mean, that's cool, but if, I, I just rather go see it at a bar and just relax and chill mm-hmm. instead of I'll like, see. Trying to get, yeah, we'll, we'll play that by year after the show. I'll let you know where, where things mm-hmm. are um, playing out throughout the day. Oh, definitely. But let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the debacle that happened last week with the Washington football team in Denver. Uh, <laughs> with, with Denver, uh, to me, they're not yeah. even worth talking about, um, they're, hey. they're a disaster. They lost to the, the Raiders. I mean, and Drew Locke is every, who everybody thought he was. Um, mm-hmm. Some some fans out here keep thinking he's the answer. I, you know, I've been over him since. So what's the reason for him not kind of leading that team? Like, why, why do you feel that Drew Locke is not that, is not that guy? Or it's just not, not good. Just, just not good. Just, just, just like that. Even yeah. period. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, I don't even think he's a guy. If you ask, if you were, if I was a GM, he's not mm-hmm. even somebody I would even look at as like a backup I would want to bring in. I just, I just, I just don't think he's he's good. like I don't a think Dan he's Orlowski that talks a lot but was horrible when he played. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, he's not for me. I don't. No, mm-hmm. I'm not <laughs> interested. You can see Dale's very frustration and anger when he talked about Drew Lock. <laughs> Cause, like. It, and it's just because the stupid fans always think he's the answer. Like, what has he shown anybody that, that will make you think mm-hmm. he could yeah. go out there and, and do anything? And then when he gets his shots, mm-hmm. he goes out there and makes stupid plays. And, like, you know, it's like, okay, that's now, another drill lock moment. An experience, or do you think it's no, he's just, just not good? He's, he's just, just not, not he good. doesn't have that the QB IQ that everybody talks about. He's just not a good, not a good quarterback. No. Mm, yeah. I, I, I'm kind of getting my that opinion about Taylor Heineke as well. I mean, he's good. I mean, good backup and all, but I don't. He think will he can... be. He he is a guy who can be an NFL backup quarterback, but that's that's his ceiling. Yeah. Exa- um, yep. Yep. Hundred percent agree. Because I was saying, I was I, at one point, I was like, he has that it factor, but that only it factor is if everything works well in his favor. Like he cannot. Yeah. Like, if the running game is clicking, if the defense is firing yeah. on all cylinders, then he can yes. be a solid. So he can be a solid backup, but to be a starter in this league, that's a difficult situation to say. And 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 I, I I'm gonna say this. I love Tyler, but that game against Dallas, it was a it was a team debacle going from coaching all the way down. I mean, they weren't prepared for that game. I mean, there's a lot of unfortunately, there's a lot of internal distractions, and it's we're all human, and that does play a factor into it. But at the end of the day, it's professionalism that needs to show. And they tried as much as they could, but they couldn't withstand the outside noise. And, and when Logan Paulson was breaking down the film study, I have to disagree with him on some of those points that he made. He said that the, that the score was a lot closer than it was in the game. I disagree. Um, no. It's not like you can't take – if you have a big shot at the beginning of the game, you have to know that you have, you, you're going to make it. 
you can't throw an interception against a Dallas defense that's almost number one in the league. You just can't do that. And you lost to them before. That switches your momentum. You got to get points on that board. You got to you got to sustain drives. That's your first possession, and you and you do a like what fifty yard or sixty yard pass to Terry McLuhan that gets picked off. I mean, it's the way you throw the ball. I understand that, but you can't do those plays. You have to get, you have to set yourself up for those plays. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, the way that game played out and the and the final score is indicative of where those two teams are as oh, far yeah. as um, the development and 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 the and the teams and mm-hmm. um, where they are with their coaches, where they are with their rosters. That final score told the true story of where Washington is as a football team and where the Cowboys are. Um, the yeah. Cowboys are on the ascent. Um, they've got a, an immensely talented roster. To me, the only thing uh, holding all that talent back is probably their uh, buffoon of a coach. But he's got a ring, so um, I guess you know uh, you, you mean can, you Mike can McCarthy. That. Yeah, I guess yeah. you can respect the fact that he has a ring, even though he got it with Aaron Rodgers. Um, right. uh, is he the guy that can take this talented of a roster to that next level? I mean, I don't. Who knows. Well, the, um, the funny thing is, he doesn't have to. It's just that defense will lead them to a championship. I the hate defense to say enough, can, but. and that can, um, with all those weapons, um, they, they've they got a championship roster. Do they yeah. have a championship coaching staff is the only question. And mm. you can you can you can question Kellen Moore and his um, his overall uh, inexperience. Um, you know, he's still young and, and still developing. He was just in the league, uh, you know, not too many years ago. Right. And then uh, McCarthy, who is coming off getting fired, I mean, is he the guy that can that can take this roster to the next level? Um, we'll see. Uh, probably not this year with with uh, with Green Bay being so hot. Um, they'll they'll probably be representing the uh, the NFC, and then uh, KC in the in the AFC. But mm-hmm. who, you know, we'll see how that all play out, plays out. We can probably do some Super Bowl revised playoffs and Super Bowl picks either this show or next show. Because I'm yeah. sure they they're going to change from where we were picking, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I didn't even remember what I picked, yeah. but yeah. I mean that game. I mean, it was just like it was just like you know, it's it's Murphy's laws. What can go wrong will go wrong. Everything went just haywire. I mean, it was just frustrating to the point where I had I just stepped away from after the second quarter. I just stepped away. I'm like, this team's not going to go anywhere. I mean, they had pity points here and there, but they yeah. didn't do what they needed to do. I mean. No. <sighs> Like I just I just don't understand protection. I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe we we've seen too many old school football. And when you know you have three pass rushers, you got to block. Like you have to get more people to block them, just to even to chip them to do something to get them off their line. They're just blocking them one on one. You can't block these guys one on one. It's not going to happen. They're too good and they're too quick. I mean, <laughs> like it just. It was just like, I don't know what the coaching staff was thinking when they were calling some plays or when they're making their plays for that week. They need to have, they, they needed to get together and be like, listen, guys, we need to do max protection, three tight end sets, you know, block. I mean, yeah, you don't, you may not block them fully, but at least if you get them off their line, it that crucial like half a second can save you a lot of time too. I mean, it's a blink of an eye. These guys are like, I mean, they're like, they're just superhuman athletes. Like, you just need a, a small time to get them off their game. And you, and, it, and that didn't happen at all. Every, everybody was like blocking one-on-one. But when you start double teaming and everything, it's too late. You're, you're already down three to four scores. You, you just might as well be like, all right, we just wrap it up. We got kicked in the teeth and, you know, <laughs> we'll just <laughs> go back out of the other day. Yeah, um, the Cowboys just took it to them. And that's, that's just it at the end of the day. The better team won. Um, yeah. Like I said, it was indicative of where they both are. Um, and, and somehow – somehow they've still got a shot at the playoffs. Um, and and it's, it's not even that long of a shot. Um, what really? they really need is for San Francisco, San Francisco to lose this week. And that, that could happen even though they're playing the Texans because Jimmy G has a broken thumb on his throwing hand. Right. He still plans to play. Um, right. that, that's only going to help um, the Washington football team's chances. Um, and te- the Texans have been playing. They haven't given up in any game. They're not that good of a team, but Davis Mills is looking good at QB. So they could very well go out there and beat San Francisco. If that loses, they're, I mean, the playoffs are in play. Um, oh, that's true, yeah. If Minnesota loses either one of their last two games, that helps the, the football team. If New Orleans loses a game and if Atlanta loses a game, that's all they need. Those can all happen. If, if that scenario plays out, they're in. Well, if they, they win their last two games. That 
mean, yeah, that's, that's it's probably like, the longest shot. It, <laughs> <of anything. laughs> it's like a hail mary, dude. Like, <laughs> but if, mean, if they beat Philly and then Philly loses in Week 18, here's the other scenario: they beat Philly see, and Philly loses in Week 18. Minnesota yeah, wins things. one game. Mm-hmm. New Orleans loses a game and Atlanta loses a game. That's scenario two, how they get in. Then the last scenario, Washington wins out, of course. Philly loses. I mean, they beat – so that means they beat Philly this week and then Philly loses next week. So they need Philly to lose both. Mm-hmm. Um, they need Minnesota to lose again. They need Atlanta to lose again. Then they need Atlanta to beat New Orleans in week 18. So, like I said, these scenarios, <clears throat> they need a lot of help, but they're not unrealistic. Um, yeah. What they need is for San Francisco to lose this week, though. And so mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes. It's see that's the for some reason I don't want them to make the playoffs. Yeah, for it, it's just that they don't. Des- they, won't, I mean, they won't go anywhere. I mean, yeah, uh, it's they like they don't anywhere. deserve to be. I mean, yeah, I, I hate yeah. to say it, but they don't deserve to be in the playoffs the way they're yeah. playing. And even if they do get in, what are they going to do? One and done? Like what is? What, 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 I mean, <laughs> yeah. And, and this is we were we said we were too early to jump the gun on the Wizards cleaning house, but yeah. I'm I'm not. I don't feel like I'm jumping the gun here when I say if it was me. I'm firing everybody. I'm cleaning as much of this roster out as I can because mm-hmm. if you're bringing in a if you're bringing in a coach, you're not bringing in a coach to be mediocre. Your 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 ultimate goal is winning a championship, and I don't see Ron Rivera as the coach that can take this team there because all he did was bring Carolina up here. He brought all of his assistants. He mm-hmm. brought some players up here too. He brought the QBs on this roster. Heineken and Allen came from yeah. Carolina. What did Carolina do when he was? He got fired. So if you get fired, why would you come and bring the same mess, the same garbage up here to do the same thing? It's mm-hmm. to get the same result. You're going to get fired. It's just a matter of when. If it's me, I'm doing it now. Yeah. I don't want to start building my championship contender next season. Yeah, not, see, not, uh, not continuing in, on the same, like, listless path. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just so weird. Like, like, the entire staff is from Carolina. I mean, they, they don't even have a um... – a training staff because they got they, they got into some sort of mess with yeah, the, the legal stuff. FBI stuff and and it's just like it, it's just frustrating to see like a good defense that was good last year they were pretty decent last year take a huge step back this year and yeah. offense going nowhere and it's just like is is this too big for Scott Turner is it is this way too big for Scott Turner? Is is Jack Del Rio's system too complex for these guys to understand? Because Jack Del Rio is an amazing defensive coach. Amazing. I mean, I was so happy that we got him and Ron together on the same team. But sometimes things like these guys are geniuses when it comes to play calling and things. Sometimes your personnel don't fit your scheme. <laughs> it just but I mean, see, and that's that's fair, but uh Ron Rivera chose this personnel. He chose to bring in these Carolina quarterbacks. Um, right. And, of course, they had Fitz that they want, They were projecting as starter. But if you're projecting Fitz as your starter, where do you plan to finish as a team anyway? I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick, I, I don't think he's gone to the playoffs in his career. No, so, he has not done that. Um, so, like, that's, that's your plan? Uh, Fitz and a couple of Carolina washed-out backups? Like, I need a better plan if it's me. Um, mm-hmm. there are going to be some decent names out there as far as coaches with B enemy with left, which I, I'm, I'm looking, if it's me, I'm, I'm cleaning house, but I, I don't think they're going to, cause I don't no, think he wants to not. pay out, um, the rest of that contract. For but you. I would say this though, uh, if Scott Turner, if, if you say clean house, I'll probably get, let go Scott Turner and get Brian left, in here as the coach, as OC, but see teams, you like, that makes a lot of sense. But these guys don't do stuff like that. They don't work that way. If you look yeah. at any coach that goes anywhere, any coach that gets fired and goes to another team, he always brings guys he knows. He always brings mm-hmm. guys he's familiar with. And that comes down to what it really – okay, there is okay, there, there a coach in Denver back in the day. Um, I'm not going to name his name. He's a pretty well-known coach and eventually went on to be a head coach. Um, but he was an assistant there in Denver. He got a job on that staff just because he was friends with the coach. He had no experience coaching the position. Um, no, ex- I don't think he had coaching experience, mm. but he got the job because he was friends with one of the coaches. And the reason they do that is because mm. A, the A is trust. They, they know that person. If you bring them in, they're not going to stab you in the back and try to take your job. But two, there's such well-paying jobs that you want to help your friend out with those jobs instead of bringing in somebody with the experience. So what mm. you do is you bring in your friend, give him that high-paying job. He was making about 400000 as an assistant coach. 
you bring them in, you give them that job, and then you tell them, okay, this is my scheme, and you know, you do this and this and this, and you coach the position this way. So whether the guy has experience or not, your friend is in there making that kind of money. It's not about, oh, I'm, I'm going to bring in the best coordinator for the job, because if, if guys do that, then they think the coordinators will be trying to take their job, you know. Mm. So it's that Wait, the, the, the you game just is four hundred thousand. Yeah, for being the game. Assistant. Yeah, the game is broken that way, and mm. it plays out that way in college too. And Dabo Sweeney touched on that. Clemson's coach, he touched on that a few years back where he said um, receivers are coming into the league unprepared because these guys, they don't, they don't hire receivers, former receivers as coaches. They just bring in their friends and say, I'll go tell these guys what to do. He said when guys come from Clemson, come from Clemson um, they know how to play the position in the league, and that, that plays out. Look at DeAndre Hopkins, look at Sammy Watkins and all the Clemson receivers who come out and know what they're doing um, because Dabo was a receiver, and so he knows how to coach that position. Um, but yeah, and so that you see that stuff bearing out um, when when Rivera gets fired from here, he probably won't get another shot. But if he does, Scott Turner is going to be there with him. Um, his boys are going to be there with him. They're probably mm -hmm. bring along Heineke. It, you bring along guys you know in, in the NFL. That's how they do it. That's the way it's always been done. Sometimes that works, but in this situation, it's not. Like maybe it's just my Joe Gibbs love for Joe Gibbs. He brought together one of the most experienced staff in the NFL yeah they almost yeah they, they had over like 100 years I guess because everybody was been in the league for such a long time and that brain trust he he even said like if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have been a, a good coach because they had to come up with the game plan because and you can see it in the schemes like like um I think Brian Mitchell was talking about this the other day on, J, on JP and, 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 and on their show was um B Mitch and Finley was he was like Joe Gibbs will do different different formations but run the same play you don't even see that nowadays. Like, I mean, you have to find some sort of, tr not, not trickery, but do something different that the defense has to accommodate for you. And then, and then if you run the same, like, oh my, then the, it'll make them think that then, then the court, then the DC up upstairs or on the side, like, oh my God, if I see this formation, I have to, at, at that time you're guessing because you don't know which play they're going to run. And I don't see that in this team. I don't see them. They say they, they say they, they make adjustments during the game. And that's what people do, but I don't see it. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not that advanced to see they're making those adjustments and I'm not seeing it. But from a, from a fan's perspective that, that normally watches a game or a lot, most of it, I don't see them making any adjustments during the line calls. I mean, if, well, if they are, then. Along those lines, um, I'll give Scott Turner the benefit of the doubt, of the doubt that he's limited and what he can call and adjust and all that stuff due to the fact that Heineke is his quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, there's only so much you can do. It's not like you can go out there and run an air raid scheme with the quarterback who has a pop gun arm. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, you can see the difference in the play calling. When they had Gilbert at quarterback last week, they were going down the field because he has an arm. Mm. Um, but with Heineke, you can't call those kinds of plays. Um, you bring a guy in off the street and you're calling that. So that tells you what he actually wants to do. Um, and that tells you that if they get another quarterback in there next season, that it could be a completely different offense. Um, with healthy weapons and Samuel and McLaurin, um, it could be, you could be a more downfield, they could have more of a downfield scheme. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, if it's me, I'm not trusting these guys to bring in that next QB. Now that's yeah. unrealistic because these guys will all be back and they will be making that choice. Yeah. Um, so just hopefully they can get somebody in who he trusts to run his scheme the way mm -hmm. he actually wants to run it. Yeah. Um, but remember on one of our shows, Glenn and Mike Lennon, mm -hmm. Do you think that he'll be a good fit for this team? Because I, I or he will, he'll just not even. I love him as a person, but <laughs> I honestly don't understand how he's still in the league. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he looks bad because the Giants are bad and they don't really have any receivers, but he just, he doesn't look like he has it anymore. I hope I'm wrong because I, I like the dude. Um, I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope he's just in a bad situation. I'm sure he'll still be, he, I don't think there's any, any, uh, uh, chance he'll be out of the league by any means he's he's still a serviceable backup quarterback um mm -hmm. but as far as being their answer not not at yeah. all no. so let's wrap this segment up um i'm gonna call that this that the washington football team they'll win their last two games because when you get humiliated and you get Antonio humiliated. gibson is out this week you don't think that'll hurt him no, nah, not at all. Because I, 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 I mean, as much as a fan I am of Gibson, I like Peterson a lot better or Patterson. Just, just me. I mean, I, I like a shorter running back who can go up the field and he's quick. He doesn't have the opportunity, but the backups are doing well. I mean, he's fumbled a lot this year. And Cosme and is I, out too, one of the offensive linemen. 
He's out. Oh yeah, Cosme is out too. So it, it, I mean, I don't know if McKissick's back. If McKissick, if Miss, if McKissick comes back after his concussion protocol, then they may have a shot. But I like their backup running backs a little bit better because a they don't fumble and they get the job done. I'm not saying Gibson won't. I mean, I think he's just you know sometimes one fumble it's like fumble, fumbleitis. You, it's 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 just a mental thing. It's just how you grip the ball. But he'll be back next year. He'll, he'll correct it next year. But I don't think they'll skip a beat without him. I mean, because at the end of the day, I, I, I like I, I like who they chose, and then I like the backups who are where they have it at. They'll win their next two, but they won't make the playoffs. They 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 have no reason to. I mean, at the end of the day, um, the. I hate to say it, even in the draft, if they need to get a quarterback, they need to go back. They have, they, have, they probably would need to trade or just pick up somebody in the second or third rounds because they're not well, going to get this, to the first. With this not being one of those drafts where you've got a guy, at quarterback, who's like clearly the guy, um, mm -hmm. I think that's these are the kind of drafts where you can luck into somebody just being good. Mm -hmm. um, and so if they have like a, a you know around the 10th or so pick, I think they can get a quarterback there who they can groom um, to be – uh, the starter going forward and, and maybe even looking to bring in Fitz back next season to be the bridge for him. I'm not interested at this point. I know we said before the Heineken could be a, a decent bridge QB. I'm not interested in that. Um, I'm ready to move on from him completely. I know they won't because he's, he's one of their guys, but I, I don't want to see him out there as a starter next season. Um, he's, he's got the moxie and all that, but he just talent wise, he just, his arm is not sufficient yeah. to be a starting quarterback. So if you want to bring Fitz back and let him be that guy who can who can bridge between the young guy that they draft, hopefully, and then and and you know them to changing off. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but you got to get somebody else in there outside yeah. of Heineke. Yeah, I, I just feel that he Heineke may be like that's the thing though. Like I think I may have pr like prematurely said he has that it factor because he does, but I don't think it's the the it factor that we're all looking for. And I, I kind of presumably said something that I shouldn't have said, but I was just so hyped up because <laughs> he. No, cause, I think I agreed with you on that because uh, uh, he was playing so well, but it really was just the team overall playing well. Right. Um, and we we with with Chris on the show the last time, we we said arm strength is not everything, but with him and his decision making with the yeah. lack of arm strength, you know that's that's a killer combination. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, my, my, my thing is they are, um, they, they're not going to be in the playoffs. So another year of uh, looking for a new QB, <laughs> we just yep. need to find that one. We just need to find that hidden gem in the draft, like, like a Herbert or, a, you know, or the QB from Buffalo. If we can find one of those guys, it's a long shot, but, you know, hey, who's complaining? I don't like Josh Allen either, but. That's a, that's a whole for another show, but um, I just feel that you know, I I, I like if, if it was me personally, I like to build the line, then go to the quarterback because you have to have somebody to protect him. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be all for them drafting an, an off a left tackle. Yeah. Oh yes. Because Leno yes. is not going to be here next season, so nope. I'm, I'm all for that. Um, yeah. I I want the majority of their early picks to be offense. Yes. Um, the defense is fine, and I don't. I frankly don't even really care about the defense because this is an offensive league. The rules are geared towards the offense. Mm -hmm. The defense, you can just piecemeal together. Um, you got to yeah. be able to outscore teams, though, and they, they don't, they're not that. So mm -hmm. they got to get the offense set. If we can get another linebacker in, like a, 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 a good, like maybe a Mike, not a Mike, but maybe like, a, like one of the a weak side or a strong side backer, I think we'll be good. And maybe, maybe a safety and a corner in the later rounds. If one of those hidden gems will be set on that, but the first round, I actually pick, think their I, secondary is not so bad. It's just they got to yeah, get healthy yeah, in the pass true. rush, and then you yeah. Know. I mean, with hopefully with Chase and Sweat, and then if Allen and uh, Payne can get their differences aside, Payne won't be here. You don't think so? I don't think so. Mm. I think he's got one year left on his deal. I could be wrong, but um, I thought they resigned him, him though, right? No, they resigned Allen. With Payne's deal coming up, and it might be this season, but I think it's next season. With his deal coming up, they'll probably look to move him um, and mm. get something for him instead of just losing him. Yeah, he doesn't want. I don't think he wants to be here anymore after they. I don't him. think so either. I, I I think see that's the see, uh, not not to like go off topic or anything. That's why when John Allen's like, we all have to look at. It. I was like, listen, bro, 
That stuff you have to say behind closed doors. You cannot say that to the media because at the end of the day, if you don't perform, that's that's what happens on the sideline because your teammate is going to look at you and be like, hey, bro, whatever you're saying is BS because you're not performing well and you're blaming everybody else and saying we all suck. That's the kind of talk that needs to happen behind closed doors. What you say to the media is, hey, we're working on it. We're, we're, we're going to get better. But you don't say, oh, we played like this. We played. No, 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 no. You have to be peanut butter as possible because the media will use that against you. And that's what they did. Yeah. And and as a person, you can say all oh, brothers fight this and that. You took a swing, bro. You took a swing. Where was your composure? Yeah, yeah, someone, yeah, someone put their finger on your head. That's okay. No, but... I'm swinging too if that happens, to be honest. <laughs> if you come yeah, up and push I... my head, I, you're... Yeah, that, 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 okay, I have to take that back, but yes. But I, I, I would have I would have. You can, you can point, but don't make contact. And don't be like, don't push, I'm a grown man. Like, you know. That's, <laughs> that's just, true. That's that almost true. to the level of spitting in somebody's face. That's almost... Oh, like... yeah. I, I probably would not have swung at him because I know the cameras are on me. But if it was off cameras... <laughs> I, I, it would have been on like Donkey Kong because as you said, like, you don't do that to a grown man, but that's the thing though. There's so much things that are boiling over. And also I want to give um, our condolences to the sweat family for the loss of their brother. Yeah, that's um, that the was just, thing uh, in the world. yeah. I mean, that's, you can't imagine that stuff that, that's happened. So we do give our condolences to them. Um, it, it's just one of those things that no one should go through. It's just, it's just a tough situation. And I think and condolences to the family of Olivia Peters too. Yes. Still in the Olivia car crash. Peters. Do we know what happened with that? Was it just like, because the re initial been... reports were speed was a factor, but I don't think anything has, has come out as far as the official word on the yeah. reason for the accident, but just definitely condolences. I, I know um, he's going through a lot, losing your girlfriend. I mean, that's just, yeah, it's just it was one of those things to and, and losing your brother. I mean, it, it, either one of those things, like I can't even imagine. Like, mm -hmm. so prayers yeah. to the families of the in, of the individuals um, lost and 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 the, and the people who have you know to, and to them specifically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just the worst. Yeah, it's one of those things, and I think that kind of boiled over to the game, and you could see like the emotions were still running high. I mean, it, it was just they played with a lot of heavy hearts, and it's unfortunate that you know. You, it, we can criticize everything, but at the end of the day, it is a human, and we all are human. Things do kind of boil over, and we can see the differences in the team. But at the end of the day, you know what? Like, well, let's like, you know, let's regroup and win the next two. And hey, maybe by luck they can get into the playoffs. Even though I said they're not going to do it, but yeah. And while we're while we're giving condolences and and on this somber topic, I, you know, definitely uh, Betty White. Um, I used to watch Golden Girls. I was a Golden Girls loyalist back in the day because my mom watched it. I watched it all the time. Um, and so when all of them started to pass away, like when B. Arthur died and yeah. um, Estelle Getty and, and Rue McClanahan, when they all passed away, I was I was sad about all that. And I was glad that Betty White was still here with us for mm -hmm. all this time. And she was posting tweets about, you know, looking forward to her 100th birthday and all that. And um, that's just, when I saw that news yesterday, I, I, like, I looked at the phone, I was like, oh, man. Yeah. Like that, that's just, that's the worst way to end the year losing an icon like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, definitely uh, appreciate you, Betty and, and safe Thanks home on laughs. up to heaven. Thanks yeah. for the laughs and everything you did. Um, and thanks for, thanks for and, always being you, Betty White. Yeah. And on that thing is just also John Madden's thing that, yep. that, that really like got us because, uh, most of you don't know, like we have like a personal touch with John Madden. I mean, people say that, but if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be like the person that I know football because he taught me football. I mean, I was just a novice. I was just, you know, looking at certain things, but like he really taught me the game to look at it differently. He taught me from a lineman's perspective. And that's what I played. I played a lineman on both sides of the fence. I was offense and defensive lineman. And he taught me how to look at the game from that point of view and how to look at the game from not just a fan's perspective, but from the from the player's perspective, how they played and how he, he just made football fun. And to watch that documentary and to hear the news the day after, it was just rough. I mean, it was kind of, I mean, it was a somber day. And then also we got the news that Dan Reeves passed away today too. Yeah, I saw that so, too, yeah. Um, and it's just... Just lots of... Uh huge losses for for mankind here in the past mm -hmm. week or so um but back to john madden um you know you're gonna 
there's a lot of stuff out there about, you know, the, the man he was as a coach, um, as a broadcaster, um, just, you know, in society, just, you know, but with everybody digging up dirt on everybody these days and, and finding skeletons in everybody's closet, there was never anything bad brought up or said about John Madden. And that just, that over how long he's been in the public eye for nothing bad to ever come out about you, like that shows you he was just a great man. Um, the world was a better place with him in it. Um, mm. So it's a, it's a big loss, um, but he left his impact on the world and his legacy will keep going on. And, and his video game, his voice will live on in the, in the, in the future generations. And he deserves that um, because mm. he definitely left. He had the same impact on my life. Like I grew up hearing his voice all the time, playing those video games, um, watching the broadcast because the, uh, the Redskins games back in the day, him and Summerall were always doing those games because they did the NFC back in the day on, mm. on CBS. So I, I, that's what I grew up with. That's where I learned football. So um, definitely a, it's a, a sad loss, a big loss. And um, safe home to him, to him, prayers to his family. And, and thank you, Mr. Mr. Coach Madden, for everything you did for us. Yep. And um, to get out of this somber, but the, let's move on to uh, – you want to you wanna talk about the Caps? Yeah, uh, they finish out the month 6-2-2. Two and two. So uh, a decently strong month. I, some people say, for me, that's six and four because those two are losses. But yeah, yeah. But six, two and two in, in hockey terms because you get those points. But um, uh, they're, they're playing well. A um, little bit of an inconsistent goaltending play. They've been, you, you know, they've been winning, but um, some big numbers given up on the, on the other side mm. uh, despite the wins. Um, but Obi remains hot. Um, I expect him to lead the league in goals barring injury throughout, through all, you know, all the way through. And I'll continue chasing that record, but um, they're they're playing well, man. And I, you know, we've been looking at tickets. Arthur says she's been checking out tickets so we can get out to a game at some point, um, hopefully before we leave. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're 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 hot. They're fun to watch. Um, exciting team. Kuzi's playing very well. Um, Hathaway, my guy, my new second favorite capital. Uh, <laughs> Garnet Hathaway, he's playing well, getting scrappy out there in those fights. So yeah, um, with the with the with the WFT uh, season winding down here. If you need something to watch, check out those Caps games. They're they're actually entertaining. And they're actually winning. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're as Dale noted, like the, the goalie play has been a little bit inconsistent, but you know, it's here nor there. I mean, I like Vitek. I mean, Vitek Vanacek is my guy. I like even though Samsonov is the star, but Vanacek has a little bit more of a. I guess he has a little bit more of the, the grit kind of thing. But it's also it's all comes down to defense with them. I mean, offensively, you know what you're going to get. Sometimes their defensive kind of lacks at times, and that's why they get scored on. But most of that, this team is solid all through and through. Peter Lavillette has done an amazing job yeah. of t- teaching these guys how to play his style system. Um, it's almost like um, who was the uh, Barry Trotz when Barry Trotz was here. Um, that's the same style of system with a little bit of wrinkles here and there. They may have to improve on their power play a little bit. I mean, their power play is the same, but I mean, it's been working for X amount of years and nobody's got all those goals. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but maybe change it up a little bit. So, the, so, so the, uh, so when you get on it, the, the penalty killing for the other teams kind of has to think twice about certain things. But I mean, I think they're, they're, they're built to make another run this year. There's something different about this team that that wasn't there when um, Reardon was here, Reardon wasn't a, Arty, I mean, Arty called it, he, he was like, she, she, he was, she was like, he's not a good coach. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he didn't have any fire either. He was just boring. And it's, it's yeah, been- yeah, I agree. And I don't think he commanded the players kind of respect because, it, I mean, when you're a defensive guy, like it's one thing, but when you become a head coach, you got to deal with a lot of other pressures. And I don't think he knew how to deal with those as yet because he was still a younger coach, but but now this is kind of the thing. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Maybe you should have given Barry Trotz the money he asked for, and kept the same system in place. And but... yeah, there is no question about that. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think anybody would would disagree with that point. Um, absolutely, they should have. Um... And now the Islanders now became one of the worst teams in the league to becoming one of the best teams in the league. <laughs> yeah, with, and like, with the coach defense. of his his caliber, that's going to happen. Yeah, and I mean, I I mean, maybe in the Eastern Conference, these two teams might meet again. I mean, these two teams. I mean, that's what they were calling for. We have to get past Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh always gives us a hard time, but yeah, and they're looking pretty good. Um, yeah, they're uh, they had some injuries early on, but they they're getting healthy now. Crosby's healthy, and um, so you know, they'll be right there. They'll all be right there in the end, battling it out. 
but um, I expect the Caps to stay in first place all you know throughout, and mm-hmm. um, hopefully they can solidify the back end, um, and you know because they're scoring fine. So if they get the the more of the effort on defense, then you know they can have yeah. some mm-hmm. instead of five four games. This can go to five one, you know, easy take care of business type games mm-hmm. where some of the younger guys can get more minutes. You can rest Obi a little more down the stretch, yeah. but they I mean, got to They got to shore things up on the back yeah. end, maybe even by making a move. Um, yeah, I, I think the call up guys from Hershey's. I mean, they they uh, they they, they played well Kempney too. Back the other day, dude, that was a blessing. I mean, Kempney, it's his injuries have derailed him for a while. But he looked good. It's going to take him a while to get back into, like, you know, playing shape. I mean, he, yeah, he's been playing in Hershey. He's been playing there. But it's I wonder if they're going to keep him up. I, I, you know, with guys like that, names you're familiar with from back in the day, um, I wouldn't mind if they kept him up. Um, and he, he, he contributed right away. He had an assist in his first yeah. game back. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, for them, as Dale was saying, that if you want to switch over to a, to a, a whole new thing, Hockey is one of the best, you know, you, you get everything, you get excitement, you get, I mean, there's some, you know, there, there, there's a little bit of rough and tungle. There's, a, there's some fights. So it'll be, it's entertaining and Hey, the caps were winning. That's, that's what it counts. So um, on that note, uh, do you want to talk about anything else? Do you want to go to another topic or. I'm pretty much tapped out on, um, we can predict uh, if you want to, we can give some, just a quick uh, Super Bowl pick um, okay. revised from before. Um, what are you thinking as far as uh Who's going to represent the AFC and the NFC in the Super Bowl? So, AFC, oh, I don't know, man. The AFC is just, I mean, KC maybe, Kansas City. I mean, they're getting their act together. They, they, may, they may go. For the NFC, oh, I hate to say it, and I don't want to, Dallas. Yeah, and, and I was thinking Green Bay is the obvious pick. But as I was thinking that, I was like, you know what? Dallas is going to probably sneak in there. And um, with because, you know, the, the X factor between the two teams, they've both got solid quarterbacks. Even Dak, you know, he's, he's starting to get pick things back up after his injury. Um, but quarterback for quarterback, the, 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 the difference maker in those two teams is Micah Parsons. Um, yes. he can he can he can uh, pressure Aaron Rodgers into some mistakes if they end up matching up. And um, Dallas can take that game. As far as my official pick, though, I'm going to stick with uh, with Green Bay. But I wouldn't be surprised if Dallas ended up there. And then for so, the AFC, I mean, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, K- uh, Casey. There's no – I don't think there's a sleeper that can take down Casey because if Casey gets home field, it's done. You can't beat them there. Yeah. Uh, in the NFC, Tampa, even though they're defending champions, they may kind of sneak something in. But they, they just got riddled with the injury bug. Yeah, with COVID situation, so I don't know. Godwin's out for the season. Like they still yes. have Antonio Brown and Evans, but um, you know, he was uh, a big body, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, Godwin. Yeah. He's yeah, he's he's he's. I think he was there. Um, he's a little bit bigger than Antonio Brown, uh, but he's more of like an inside type receiver. Slot. Um, sort of, like, sort of slot. Yeah. Like between like the Z index or whatever between mm-hmm. the two coming in the middle. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. Tampa could very well be there too. I mean, is is Buffalo? Buffalo's not in the playoffs, one, are they? They are. They are. There's. That... I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they they didn't end up making it. Um, and, yeah. and and Indianapolis is fighting for their lives too here uh, this weekend. With um, I think uh, I don't I think Wentz might be coming back because I See, think they changed I, their protocols. I, I'm they not, changed I was so never. I was never a big Wentz fan. I mean, that you they, know, I'm not. Yeah, yo, <laughs> not him though. It's their running game. Their running game is, is, is their key. He came out of nowhere, right? I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't know where they found found that guy, but he he's he's yeah. And their their scheme is set up for that too. So he mm-hmm. he's good, but their scheme is also gonna make any pretty See, much any running back look good. I would have said Tennessee in the AFC, only because if Derrick Henry was part of the Texans, the Titans, since he's not there. They're not. They're not even going anywhere. They're done. They're yeah. done. Yeah. Even though if he comes back, I don't think he can run on that foot. <laughs> even if, even if you wanted to. Yeah. No. He. No. He's out. Um. But it would be a cool story if. Um. If. Uh, freaking. Um. Slipped my mind just now. Which team? Uh, that's what slipped my mind. I was. I was going to say it's oh. the, uh, the Dolphins. It'd be a cool story oh. if the if the Dolphins could um can make it in after their one and seven start. Um, they're right in the mix 
Yeah. I mean, they're a decent team, man. I mean, we, I mean, we, I mean, since, I mean, since we don't see those teams play here or when we do get, get a chance, but the Dolphins have a pretty decent defense. It's just yeah, their defense they, is very good and they're, they're well coached on that end too. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if Tua can not play a mistake free game, they have an equal opportunity to be in that mix equal opportunity. Yeah. And a team we haven't mentioned that was supposed to be the Super Bowl favorite. Um, you know who I'm thinking? They're supposed to be the favorites. They have an all-star team roster. All-star team roster. Name the state. That'll give it away. The Rams. <laughs> oh, the Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I okay. I have to I have to retrack retract my statement on them. They're not going to the Super Bowl. I no. know I picked them to go and win it, but I don't think they're going to. <laughs> no. Um, Stafford is just they won this week, uh, despite his play. Um, mm-hmm. He was out there playing like butt, and they still somehow pulled the game out. They've got Cam Akers coming back off his Achilles injury um, mm-hmm. this week. He he's um he's only been out from his injury like six months. He's coming back, um, so um, he's a good player. He might help them out some, and hopefully take some of the pressure off Stafford. But I still don't think um, he's the guy that can take them where they want to be. Uh, um, they're they're going to be a playoff team, but I, I could. I fully expect them to lose their first game. In the playoffs? Yeah. Oh, they're done. I mean, do they, they don't have home field, do they? <laughs> they are. They're, no, they're not the ones. Uh, I think uh, the Cardinals are still the one seed. That <clears throat> oh, we didn't even talk about the Cardinals yet, dude. That, they're that loss. They're going to lose this week, too. Yeah. Like, like we stated, like, they needed to win that game for morale. They, they – oh, man. <laughs> yep. That can break a team's back, though, man. Like, even though you have the best record, going into the playoffs, if you're not hot, like, or even have that kind of stride going in, it affects you. Yeah, and they're going to lose this week because they have Dallas. And then uh, – Wait, what week, time is their game? Four? Four twenty-five. yep. Ooh, that's going to be a good – I'm definitely – That'll be a good game. And yeah. that'll, be on, that'll be on here. Um, yeah. And then they finish up with the Seahawks. They'll win that one. So they'll finish 11 and mm. – what is that, 11 and 6 oh. now? Yeah. So they'll finish 11 and 6, yeah. um, and they'll probably keep the one seed. What are the Rams? I think the Rams are, what, 10 and they – have, they have 10 wins, right, the Rams? They should have 10 wins. Oh, the Rams are number one in that division. No, so they are. Um, they're 11 yeah. and 4. Who do they have oh. this week? Um, let's see. Ravens. Oh, that's a win. So they'll be yeah. 12 and 4, and then they finish out with the Niners, um, mm-hmm. and they'll beat them too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they'll finish – they'll finish 14 and 4. Who the Rams? Yep. Jeez. What, 13 and four? 13 and four. 13 and four. But still, I mean, who would ever thought? But I would say this you think Sean McVay will be on the hot seat if he no. doesn't win? No, because it's not him. It's, it's not, not him. him. It's, it's Stafford. Trash. Oh, okay. And I, maybe he made that pick and maybe that puts him on the hot seat, but right. they, he won't be after that. The only coach to get fired after a season like that was, uh, was it Schottenheimer? Who got fired after 13 and three? Yeah, somebody, Martin. somebody got fired. Maybe I'm, I'm, I can't remember who it was. I think somebody took the Chargers like 13 and that three. Was Marty then? Because oh, Marty, was Marty? Was, yeah, it had to be because Marty, yeah, Marty had a winning season. They lost in the playoffs and then they fired him after that. People were shocked about that because they had, they, they were like, they were, I think, one player away from the, because those Chargers team with Marty were amazing. I mean, th- those guys were stacked. <laughs> they would say, how and, they were, they just didn't, they just couldn't get over the hump. And, and, and then, you know, they say Marty Ball, Marty Ball, but, you know, unfortunately, Marty Ball was the one that got him there and they got away from Marty Ball and they lost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't even yeah. know Philip Rivers retired, just on a side note. I, I thought he was still in the lead. I thought he was still with the Colts for a while before. Yeah, they were talking about bringing, because he said um, before the season started, he went to coach high school football and he said before the season started that, you know, High school season will be over, you know, at some point in the NFL season, and I, I'll come back if a team needs me. He put that mm. out there, and they were talking about they were in talks to bring him back before Carson Wentz got cleared to play this week. I think he's playing because mm. they they changed their the NFL changed their protocols. Let me make sure he's coming back. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, they changed their protocols for how how long a player can stay out. Let's see. Um, yeah, he he he'll, he'll be back. Uh, You'll be back. Mm. But yeah, um, that's all I got. So we can go ahead and wrap it up. You can go ahead and close us out. Yeah. So on that note, uh, thank you guys for joining us this 
bright and like. early like and subscribe this bright and early new year's day happy new year to everybody all of our listeners to you and your family um talking hats signing out i'm harish i'm dale thank you all again thank you for the thank support you all again peace and love happy new year happy new year